very affordable, offering huge storage capacity. And you can find a large variety of external drives at Apple retail stores, the Apple online store, or just about any other computer store. As soon as I plug it into my iMac, Time Machine detects that a new drive has been connected and asks me if I'd like to use this as my Time Machine backup. I confirm, and Time Machine starts to make the initial backup of everything on my Mac. After this first backup completes, Time Machine will check every hour and backup anything that has changed. It's all very simple and automatic. Now, what if you need to recover something? You might have accidentally deleted a folder, an iPhoto album, or even an important email message. Thankfully, Time Machine was designed to make it simple to go back in time and either browse for the things you want to restore or find them with Spotlight. I have a folder here that should contain several documents that I've been recently working on. There was a presentation that I created with Keynote along with all the supporting materials. I'm not sure what I did, but the files are gone. Let's activate Time Machine and go back to find them. Here in the dock, there's a new icon for Time Machine. When I press it, my desktop is transformed. The open folder is now shown cascading back in time. And there's a timeline on the right side of the screen because Time Machine remembers exactly how your Mac looked on any given day. Also note the arrows. These are important because they let me navigate back and forth through the changes that have been made to this folder over time. When I press the back arrow, Time Machine will fly me back in time to the most recent change to this folder. There. It's taken me back a couple of days just prior to when I accidentally lost my project. When running Time Machine, I can use Quick Look to preview my documents to see if I found the right one. I just double click on my presentation and I can glance at each slide to make sure this is the one I want. I only really need my presentation. So to restore it, I select the document and press the restore button. Time Machine returns me to my regular desktop and copies the selected files from the backup drive, just like that. That's how you can browse back in time. But if you don't know precisely where the missing document is, you can also use Spotlight. Here's how. In the Finder, search for the documents you're looking for. In this case, I'm looking for a team roster spreadsheet, but nothing found. Again, let's go back in time with the help of Time Machine. Notice how Time Machine had kept my search string. Now when I press the back arrow, Time Machine will search to find the most recent backup that contains the file I'm looking for. There it is. About two weeks ago, there was a number spreadsheet called Team Roster 2007. I'll preview it with Quick Look and restore it with a single click. So that's Time Machine in the Finder. But Time Machine is also available directly from applications like Address Book, Mail, and iPhoto. Let's open up the new iPhoto 08. I used to have a set of photos in an event called Summer Picnic, but it's missing. No problem. Let's activate Time Machine again, and now I can see the different versions of my iPhoto library going back in time. This time, I'll use the timescale to go back to last week when I last saw the collection of photos. There it is. To restore all of the pictures from this event, all I have to do is click Restore. That's Time Machine. If you ever lose a file, or your whole computer, you've always got another copy to go back to. It's like having a spare for everything on your Mac. If you're like me when you're on your Mac, you'll have several different things going on at once. You might be browsing the web and checking email, working on photos and writing a blog, or finishing a presentation. The windows for all these activities are mixed together. Wouldn't it be great if you could organize your display to show just those windows that are related to a specific activity? With Spaces, you can. Here's how. First of all, you need to turn on Spaces from System Preferences. There's a preference called Exposé and Spaces. Just go to Spaces, and with a click, it's enabled. Now you can decide how many distinct spaces you want. Each space will correspond to a distinct activity, and you can add or remove rows and columns using the plus, and minus buttons. I'm going to set up four spaces. Each space is numbered, so let's start with the default space, space number one. I'll open up Safari and Mail. This is the space that I'll dedicate to general internet and communication use. To move on to my second space, there's a couple of ways to navigate. I can just click my spaces icon in the dock, and it shows me four spaces. 
If I click the space in the top right, I'm taken there. Now in this space, I'll open up iPhoto to work on my images. I can click the Spaces icon to go back to the first space, but we've also built in some convenient shortcuts. Holding down the Control key, I can press the arrow key to advance from space to space. So to go back to the first space, I press Control and the left arrow. To go back to my iPhoto space, it's Control and the right arrow. I'll move on to the third space using another shortcut. Hold down the Control key and press the number that corresponds to the space you want. I'll press Control plus 3 key and I'm taken right to this space. Here I'll open the presentation that I'm working on. I can even take a break from work and go to my fourth space where I can resume a game I was playing a while ago. There's one last trick I'd like to show you. Let's say that you have an open window in one space and you really want it in a different one. No problem. Just click the Spaces icon in the dock, and from the bird's eye view, you can drag any window from one space to another. You can even drag an entire space to rearrange the order of your spaces. Now I've set up four different spaces and can quickly and easily get to any specific activity I want. That's Spaces, another great way to keep things organized on your Mac. Mail in Leopard is better than ever. It makes it easier to add new accounts, allows you to send beautifully formatted emails, and is a great organizational tool for keeping track of all of your notes and to-dos. Setting up an email account for the first time can be complicated. Leopard makes it simple. If you are using .Mac, Yahoo Plus, Google Gmail, or other popular email systems, you simply type in your name, email address, and password. Then click Create, and Mail does the rest. Often people send themselves emails as notes and reminders, so we built note-taking and to-dos right into Mail. There's an icon in the toolbar for creating a new note. Click it, and you get a new yellow notepad to type into. I'll type a quick note. I can even drag in images or other documents as attachments. When I finish my note and close it, it appears right in my inbox. Because it's in my inbox, I can access my note anywhere I can access my mail. If you have several notes, there's also a special notes mailbox in the reminders section that shows all of your notes. Let me open up another note. One of the items in my note is actually a reminder of something I have to do. So I can select that portion of the note and press the to-do button, making a new to-do. That text is now highlighted in orange, and there's a checkbox that I can click when that to-do has been completed. There's also an icon to the left that lets me set some options, including due date and priority. And because to-dos created in Mail are automatically added to iCal, you can choose which calendar to add them to. And any changes you make will be reflected in both Mail and iCal so it's a really convenient way to stay organized. Mail also lets you send out emails with stunning templates that will impress your friends and family, no matter what the occasion. As you compose a new message, just click the Show Stationery icon, and you can pick one of 32 Apple Design templates for your email. If you're sending a birthday greeting, inviting people to a celebration, making an announcement, sharing photos, or simply want to send an email with style, there's a stationary template for you. Here I'd like to send an email to friends about a recent trip. I'll pick the postcard template, type in my note, wish you were here, and using the built-in photo browser, pick images from my iPhoto library. Here's the event I want. I just drag them into place. Then I can easily switch the placement of the photos, resize, or reposition. Mail is even smarter in Leopard with a new feature called Data Detectors. Here's an email from someone that I recently met. At the end of the email, the signature includes the person's full contact information. 
Instead of copying a 